Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for this Outdoor Art Club presentation, The Work of the Canal Alliance. I'm Kate McCormick, a member of the Outdoor Art Club Zoom team, and today Jane Scourge and I are collaborating to bring you today's program. The Outdoor Art Club is a nonprofit women's organization founded in 1902. Our mission since then has been to make civic, cultural, and charitable contributions to our community. Every year we present a public speaker series so that members of the community have the opportunity to, he to hear about topics as varied as the wonders of seaweed to coping during the pandemic to today's subject, the work of the Canal Alliance. <clears throat> our speaker, Sarah Matson, looks forward to answering your questions at the end of the program please feel free to answer or to enter questions by using the Q&A function anytime during the presentation. On many computers or devices, the Q&A button is found at the bottom of your Zoom screen. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dina Eisenhart, a member of the Outdoor Art Club and Program Chair for this afternoon's event. Welcome, Dina. Thank you, Kate. Hello and good afternoon to all of you. My name is Dina Eisenhardt and it's a pleasure to be your program chair today. Our guest speaker is Sarah Matson from San Rafael's The Canal Alliance. Sarah is a development director at San Rafael's Canal Alliance. She oversees fundraising, grants management, marketing, communications and volunteer engagement. She's a recipient of an OAC Community Services Grant. The Canal Alliance is the only provider of affordable and comprehensive immigration legal services in Marin County and helps Latino immigrants overcome the gener generational cycle of poverty. Ms. Matson will share how the Alliance continues to address the most urgent financial and health needs that arose during the pandemic. So please join me in welcoming Sarah Matson. I'll be back later during the Q&A. Thank you. Hi, Dina, and thank you for inviting me to come today to present about the work of Canal Alliance. I am delighted to be here. I really want to thank you and Kate and Jane for inviting me. Um, we're really excited to have this opportunity. And I also at the outset want to thank you. I know our, our partnership, as I know it, began a few years ago, although it may go back more years than that. Um, but the Outdoor Art um, community Committee was very um, generous, made a very generous donation at the beginning of the pandemic, um, supporting our client support fund. So today I'm very excited to share the work that we're doing to support Latino immigrants here in Marin County and um, the ways that we've responded to the pandemic. As you, as many of you probably know, it has just had a devastating impact on the community. Uh, before I get started though, I'm gonna share um, a brief three minute video that we created that shares just highlights of the work that we've done over the last few years to support youth and young people in our community. This is a community that was unable to stay home and work from home. They don't have a nest egg, they don't have savings. They need to be out there, get two or three jobs in order to put food on the table or pay their rent. So the crisis intervention program is the team that interfaces the most with the community. They tend to be like the first stop. The great majority is just lack of opportunities there. Like saying, I even if I worked full day, I, it wasn't enough even to eat and have shoes. I've had kids say I didn't have proper shoes. We really do think that having a network and, and having people that um, you can go to for support really is, is part of the healing process, right? Relationships. Yeah. 
hoy en día me pongo a, a pensar todo eso, cómo fue la ayuda de todo, de toda persona que trabaja de Canal Alianza, porque eran personas profesionales que nosotros nos ayudaban. Yo llegué a hacerme más profesional a través de, de la enseñanza de Canal Alianza. Para mí Canal Alianza es una parte de mi familia también, porque me ha ayudado muchísimo de, de muchas cosas. Aprendí a ser un líder gracias a Canal Alianza. University prep was really helpful um, in guiding me through the um, to college, through the college classes. Um, I received a lot of tutoring to help me with my AP classes. I also received a lot of mentorship. And the Canal Alliance as a whole has really helped not just me, but my family. There's the educational side that has really helped me and shaped me to be a person that's more aware of what's going on in the community, a person that's um, always looking to give back just like they gave me. I really want to dedicate, um, you know, either my nursing career or my physician assistant career to coming back and um, helping the community. Canal Lions helped me this past year by providing me with tutoring and mental health support. I was able to get a therapist because my mental health wasn't doing the best. Doing classes online, That was like really hard and stressful for me and also just trying to help my siblings as well at home. That was very challenging. Having Canal Alliance, it honestly feels like a gift. You know, just having this, this group of people, this group of wonderful people. They basically become like your family and you can really talk to them about anything. These youth are very, very strong and very resilient and they're very courageous. Everyone needs the opportunity to live a safe, happy life in the county, everyone. We are trying to make a change. And we hope that, you know, we can engage people in joining us in this fight to, to really help entire families. So that just gives you a, a little flavor of the work that we've been doing here at Canal Alliance. And um, I'll share more about our programs and our pandemic response. I apologize, the video is continuing. Um, but before I get started, what I'd like to do is I'm, I'm joined today by two of my colleagues. Um, I'm joined by Alana Goldberg from our Immigration Legal Services team. She is our Legal Outreach Coordinator who will be speaking about the work that that program does. And I'm also joined today by Rosemary Costello, uh, our manager for civic engagement. And she'll be talking a bit about the ways that we've responded to the pandemic. So I'll start off first of all by um, again, sharing my screen here. So Canal Alliance is a nonprofit champion of immigrants who are challenged by a lack of resources and an unfamiliar environment. We believe that everyone has the right to achieve their dreams. Every day we educate, empower, support, and partner with motivated immigrants and their families to help them access and address all of their unique needs from putting food on the table, to learning English, to becoming US citizens, to graduating from college, and to gaining skills that allow them to gain Uh, living wage jobs with career path employment. Uh, we believe that uh, when we partner with the community, we can make Marin a place where everyone can live, learn, work, and succeed. So Canal Alliance um, is located in the, San, in the Canal neighborhood of San Rafael, and we have been in operation for 40 years. Uh, we've been providing services to the community for 40 years. And as some of you may know, the Canal neighborhood of San Rafael is a very vibrant community, but it um, faces a lot of challenges as well. The community is very geographically isolated. Um, it's bounded by the bay on one side and the highways and the bridges on the others. Um, the, it has the po highest population density in all of Marin. There's more people residing in the Canal neighborhood of San Rafael than all of Mill Valley, for instance. Um, there are 12,000 residents living in 2,000 square miles. Um, it also has the highest per per capita population of children. So we have the highest percentage of children living in the Canal neighborhood of San Rafael. Um, the community that we serve um, are residents primarily from the Canal, but we serve 
Latino residents and others from throughout the county and actually beyond. But the majority of people we serve reside in the canal and that where the average income for a family of four is under $30,000. Most of our clients come from Guatemala, El Salvador, and Mexico, from very often from very remote countries or very remote communities. Um, and most have less than an elementary school education and have had very interrupted formal education. While Sp Spanish is the primary language that most speak, some of them speak native languages from their, own, from their home countries. And while the community that we serve faces a lot of challenges, um, they also bring a lot of strengths and assets to the community. And that is really what we're looking to celebrate. We're wanting to help people pursue their goals by supporting them to overcome the challenges and barriers they face um, and tapping into the strengths and assets that they bring. These individuals and families are strong, they are resilient, they're motivated, optimistic, and determined. They place a strong value on family and community. And parents and families are very highly motivated to do what they can to provide a more stable future for their children and for future generations. Our mission at Canal Alliance is to help low-income Latino immigrants break the generational cycle of poverty by lifting barriers to their success. Our goal is to help people that are looking to build better futures for themselves by removing the barriers that they face and providing the services that they need to pursue their longer term goals for education, immigration, workforce, and financial stability. Our primary strategy is to help people access education and immigration legal services, which have been shown to have the greatest impacts on improving economic outcomes for low-income immigrants. In the area of education and career, we offer programs both for youth and for adults. So for youth, our program, our program is our university prep program. It's a college access and success program that addresses a significant academic achievement gap for Latino youth in Marin County. It supports first generation college Brown students to obtain a four year college degree. The program is currently serving 163 youth we enroll students in sixth grade um, and we work with them all the way from through middle school, high school until they complete a four year college degree and is currently supporting 163 students. We've got 90 students in middle school and high school and 73 college students. The program is the only one that really in Marin County that offers that long term cohort based model. Um, providing intensive after school academic support, leadership development, social emotional support. Uh, the program also engages parents and families. So as many of you know who are parents, uh, engaging parents in their children's education is really important and critical to supporting students to learn. So our program offers parent engagement opportunities and um, helps them to really learn how to support their children's education. As, as you can imagine, many of the parents don't necessarily speak English themselves. They did not, many of them did not go to high school or college. So they don't have the experience um, direct experience with what that is like. So for them to have the support from our team to be able to support their kids to be successful is very important. During the pandemic, our team really stepped up and went above and beyond to support these youth. So as you can imagine, the youth in our program um, face a lot of challenges and barriers. You're hearing in the national news that Latino youth and other youth of color really face a lot of challenges and barriers early in the pandemic to accessing education. So our team stepped up and not only um, provided all the youth in our program with Chromebooks to ensure that they had access to technology. For those who didn't have broadband internet access at home, they provided them with Wi-Fi hotspots. And they also really worked intensively with the students and their parents to educate them around using computers and accessing digital literacy so that they had access to remote education when the pandemic began. Um, and the support that the team provided has really been helpful. Um, many students in our college program have mentioned that without the support that they received uh, from the staff on our program, they likely would have dropped out of college, possibly dropped out of college, or even just cut back on their classes because they felt this pressure to uh, go out and get jobs to support their families. And to address that, we were able to increase our college scholarship funding. So last year, we uh, awarded a record number, the highest number ever in, in college scholarships. We distributed $160,000 in college scholarships to the 73 students that are currently in college. For adults, we also offer education programs, which include two things, um, our English as a second language classes and our citizenship classes. 
So for adults, uh, the education needs are slightly different. Our English as a second language classes are, have been designed for many years to provide the, the critical English skills that people need to navigate their daily lives, to support their children in education, and also to prepare them for, um, and to be successful in the work and to, to pursue workforce opportunities. Our English as a second language classes we offer on a range from beginner uh, level 50 to advanced intermediate to an advanced class level 500 and all of the classes currently are offered in intensive classes classes take place in the evenings from 8 to 10 p.m four nights per week uh, that is a transition that we made during the pandemic when we are no longer offering classes in person but we're offering classes online and so uh, we made the transition to offer all of our classes with that intensive schedule four days per week for two hours in the evening. And we've actually unfortunately had to cut back on the number of students that we're able to enroll uh, because it's more intensive to provide the classes in this way. But our rates of retention and enrollment of women um, being able to access the classes have actually increased. So it's been an interesting transition. As you can imagine during the pandemic, since the as we're approaching hopefully the end of a pandemic or as it becomes endemic, trying to understand how we can transition and what the program will look like going forward. But for many students accessing classes online as opposed to in-person has been really helpful. And uh, our program currently supports about 300 to 400 uh, students per year. And um, in order to make the program successful, we've also engaged about 100 volunteers 100 community volunteers are engaged in supporting our ESL classes as uh, classroom tutors and assistants and as conversational partners. Beyond our ESL classes, we also offer citizenship classes with, in partnership with our immigration legal services team. We identify people that are preparing for the naturalization exam who are on a path to become US citizens and our class helps them to prepare for the US naturalization exam. All of our classes are offered three times, like three trimesters per year. Um, and we serve in our citizenship class, we serve between 20 and 60 students per year to help them prepare for and pass the citizenship exam. One of the critical components of our adult education classes, again, for, for both classes, but particularly for our English, is to prepare students, to adult students, to be ready to enroll in our workforce development program. So our workforce development program is our most recent program it was launched in the fall of 2018 and it offers a certificate based training program that leads to career path quality jobs that offer living wages. Our program was launched in fall 2018 as a partnership with Marin Builders Association and the College of Marin and we offered a 10 week certificate based training program in construction. The program has been highly successful. We have a very high one year job retention rate for graduates. And on average, people's wages are increasing by 40% after two years upon enrollment in the program. What makes our program successful is that we offer, in addition to the hard skills construction training that we offer in partnership with our partners, Canal Alliance offers the wraparound case management support that students need to succeed in the classes. As an example, um, in one of our first classes, we were offering of the construction training, there was a student that kept showing up to class wearing sunglasses. And the instructor said, you know, it's really going to be challenging for you to wear sunglasses in certain situations, it makes it hard for you to see certain things. And he said, these are the only prescription glasses I have. And so the instructor didn't know that. And our, our um, case managers were able to help that client, you know, obtain a, a pair of non sunglass prescription glasses that he could wear in class. And so those are the kinds of barriers and challenges that people face. Uh, that might not be addressed in traditional programs, but are the specific types of things that Canal Alliance is well positioned to support. Beyond the construction training program, we're also looking at developing certificate programs or partnering on certificate programs in other areas and other industries that offer living wages and career path employment. And one of the ones that we're looking at right now, we're in conversation with the College of Marin and Health by the Bay to launch a new CNA certified nursing assistant program, which we hope will launch in the fall, this fall, 2022, and will allow a pathway for employment for people that are interested in, the, in a nursing career. So now I would like to turn over the presentation to my colleague, Alana. 
Thank you so much, Sarah. Hi, everyone. My name is Alana Goldberg. Like Sarah said, I'm the Legal Outreach Coordinator at Canal Alliance. Um, and that means that I work in our Immigration Legal Services Department. Our department is about 15 people right now, with four of those being lawyers, four being paralegals, myself, and then several support staff who handle the logistical ends of our operations. Uh, like Sarah said, we are the only provider of free and low cost, although I would say upwards of 90% of our services are completely free of charge, immigration legal services in Marin County. We can go to the next slide. So this is a, uh, a summary of the services that we provide. I won't get too into the weeds, um, but that top list is the various kinds of immigration relief that we help our clients apply for. And in the case of youth uh, minors, we also send attorneys to represent them in immigration court where unaccompanied minors have to appear before they can apply for um, asylum, temporary protected status, et cetera. Uh, in addition to all the different kinds of status we help people to apply for up to including green cards and citizenship, we also offer uh, trainings and immigration services that benefit even those who are not necessarily eligible for the services that we provide in terms of applications for immigration benefits. So one of those things is called a public charge screening. Uh, the public charge rule is a federal law that inhibits the amount of public benefits a person can receive if they're going to apply for permanent residence or a green card. And so we help people to understand what kind of benefits they, they can and what benefits they should hold off on receiving while they're in the process of applying for that green card. We also do what's called know your rights workshops, explaining to people what their rights are in the face of the legal system, law enforcement, police, and ICE. We, um, I <laughs> travel around to schools as well in the Marin area and sometimes Sonoma County. Uh, doing presentations for high school students about immigration and immigration law. And then finally, we really like to connect our clients to the other services at Canal Alliance because frequently we will be the first point of contact for somebody, but then we can get them set up with education services and social services, just depending on what those needs are. Um, and I just, I just wanted to give a brief overview specifically of our services regarding youth. So when youth come into this country unaccompanied, uh, they're often put in hostels, so to speak, by the Office of Refugee Resettlement. And in order to be let out of those hostels, they have to have a sponsor that, that will sponsor them to live in the United States. They then go to the community where that sponsor lives. And uh, between October of 2020 and August of 2021, via that sponsorship process, 233 immigrant youth ended up in Marin County, which by comparison, um, San Francisco and San Mateo counties, which are much larger and much more resourced counties, each received about 300 unaccompanied minor youth during that period. So percentage-wise, Marin County is, is contending with a lot more youth that we suddenly have to provide services for. Uh, how that looked on our end in the legal department is that uh, we perform consultations on these youth. Some of them are available uh, or are eligible rather for political asylum. Most are eligible for what's called special immigrant juvenile status, which is a special youth visa that we offer. And uh, in the past fiscal year, we ourselves opened 50 special immigrant juvenile status cases 40 more cases we began and then sent those youth to Family and Children's Law Center to receive what's called a predicate order, which just states that they are in fact unaccompanied minors and do in fact have guardianship in Marin County. And then 40 more clients were placed on our waiting list. So uh, this is kind of how we're attempting to support those youth. And we frequently uh, are put in contact through or refer them out to what's called our office, uh, Opportunities for Youth office in the social services department. And then I just wanted to share one quick story about a client that was dear to my heart because I worked one-on-one -on -one with her. So um, I, uh, in addition to my outreach work, I also do one-on-one -on -one tutoring for our clients who are preparing for their citizenship exams. 
I don't know how many folks here uh, have ever seen the US citizenship exam, but it's 100 questions that just require rote memorization. And often they're, they're quite outdated. It's a very difficult exam. And so uh, I had the student I was working with for a long, long time and she finally got her naturalization or citizenship interview in November of 2020. She became a citizen on election day and via our uh, same day registration that we have in California, she was actually able to vote in a federal election as her on her first day as a US citizen. So that was kind of my favorite client success story that I got to be part of. And now I'll turn it back over to Sarah, thank you. Thank you, Alana. Uh, the work that the Immigration Legal Services team does with Alana's support, you can imagine is very critical. As Alana said, um, it is the only provider of free and low or no cost ser immigration services in the County of Moran. So definitely a great need for those services. Um, so I just provided a highlight of the core services that we offer, you know, are immigration and education programs that really are the, are the programs that help put people on a pathway toward more financial stability. Um, but because the clients that we work with and the community that we serve face a lot of challenges and barriers uh, to the work that they do to, to their, pursuing their goals, uh, we also offer wraparound case management services, really intensive services to help address all of their needs. So our social services team is a critical component in that. Our social services team um, addresses immediate needs. They often serve as the first point of entry for newcomers who arrive in the community and are looking to, to get established and for information about housing or employment, how to enroll their kids in school, how to get their children vaccinated, those types of things it really provides critical support. Uh, but they also provide more intensive case management and referrals to other services. So our team, um, can work with clients on a longer basis to help them work toward their longer term goals. So our team has been known to sit down with people as they're working to put together a resume or to apply for jobs. Um, again, to help uh, if there's issues that come up around um, their children's enrollment in school and to help with non-immigration legal issues. They, we partner a lot of, with a lot of other organizations to provide referrals and other services and support. Um, and every year that team serves between 2,500 and 4,000 individual clients and families. Um, in addition to providing those direct services, the, the team also makes direct referrals to our own, to other services that we offer under the social services umbrella, including our behavioral health team. We have a partnership with uh, the University of California, San Francisco's uh, Child Trauma Research Center, which is an internationally acclaimed Association, and we have um, three clinical uh, clinical psychologists on staff that work directly with our clients um, and in, and with the youth and families in our after school program to address their behavioral health needs. Um, as you can imagine, the stress and the trauma that families and individuals have experienced living in poverty and as a result of their immigration experience is high already. And in the last few years, the pandemic has certainly increased that. So the need for those services was really high. And we're grateful to be able to have in-house clinicians that we can refer clients to. Our team also refers our clients to and other community members to our free weekly food pantry. So we have a free weekly food pantry that we offer in partnership with the San Francisco Marin Food Bank. And every week we distribute food to between 250 and 500 families. Um, during the pandemic, early on in the pandemic, when families were facing a lot of job and wage loss, we just saw a tremendous increase in the weekly need for food and the numbers of people seeking food from our pantry. Um, and we started to actually partner with other organizations to distribute food to um, homebound seniors and to other people that were vulnerable to the virus or those who had been exposed to the virus. Um, or we're in quarantine. So the food pantry is a critical source of support for people to have access to nutrition. So beyond those sort of general programs um, and services that the social services team offers, we also launched a new program a few years ago. We received a, a contract with the state of California to launch a new Opportunities for Youth program. And this program collaborates with the Immigration and Legal Services team to offer intensive case management support to the newcomer youth. So as Alana was mentioning, we're seeing a large number of unaccompanied youth coming to Marin County. Um, and those youth come, they need not just immigration support, but they also need a lot of intensive support to enroll in school, to find work opportunities, 
to find housing, to access healthcare. Many of them, you know, don't, most of them don't speak English. Um, some of them don't speak Spanish. And so we launched this new program to provide more intensive support for those youth to make sure that they're able to access the education and other resources that they need to be, you know, to be successful and to get on a path. Um, we also, as part of that program, it was really fun. We have launched a new soccer program as a way to um, engage the youth in recreation and socialization. And so it's been a fun program to see um, how we can provide more intensive support to the youth that the Immigration Legal Services team has been supporting for several years. And I wanted to share a client story as well, like Alana, um, I wanted to introduce all of you to Carlos. So as we talk about the opportunities for youth program and the intensive services that these unaccompanied minors are need when they arrive, Carlos is a great example. So he is someone, you may re recognize him, he was in the video that I shared at the beginning of our presentation. Carlos came to the United States in about seven years ago from Guatemala. And he first accessed Canal Alliance, our immigration legal services team. He was connected with a lawyer um, who helped him to really explore and understand his, immigrant, his immigration legal rights and options. Um, and his lawyer at the time suggested uh, that he enroll in our ESL program. So Carlos then enrolled in our ESL program and while he was waiting for his immigration status to, to shift, you know, waiting for his options there. So he enrolled in our ESL program and he gained English language skills. And a few years later in 2018, when we launched our workforce program, he had connected again with his attorney who had mentioned to Carlos that we were launching this new workforce program in construction and he thought Carlos would be a great candidate. So Carlos enrolled in our workforce program. He was among, he was in the first cohort of students in our first cohort. And he was so successful in that cohort after he completed it, he actually came on as a trainer um, and a facilitator for the second cohort. And he continued in that role for a few years. As he progressed in that course, he realized he really had a dream to launch his own, um, to get his contractor's license. So since then, Carlos has started a family. You can see a picture there with his family is a young daughter and um, he is working to get his contractor's license. And just last October, Carlos celebrated uh, the fact that he became a US citizen. He passed his naturalization exam and he became a US citizen. Um, the photo on the right here is a picture of him. He recently went back home to visit his family in Guatemala and came back with a gift to, to present to our managing attorney, Joanna, who had helped him with his legal case. And so Carlos really is provides a great example of what can happen when we invest in the dreams of young people and really provide the support and the resources they need to pursue their dreams. And now I would like to turn the presentation over to my colleague, Rose Costello, who will talk about the services that we've offered, um, launched some new services during the pandemic to respond to the crisis in the community. Thank you, Sarah. My name is Rose and I work with Canal Alliance's advocacy and policy team. And we have been um, one of the areas of Canal Alliance that's been responding to the pandemic. Really, we've all, every single team at Canal Alliance has been responding to the pandemic since 2020 in one way or another. And I've had the honor of working alongside um, staff members, co-workers of mine, uh, staffing our rapid COVID test site, um, as well as community leaders who we have partnered with um, to staff some of our um, COVID response work um, and who act as trusted messengers and trusted leaders in the community, sharing uh, information about quarantine, about isolation, about social distancing, about the vaccine, um, and etc. So to begin, I'd like to share a little bit about our financial assistance and rental assistance effort, uh, which you uh, and many others across the county partnered with us in helping tie families over during what's been an extremely challenging time. Um, in 2020, we surveyed families who we support in the canal community and their income had fallen 75% from 
receiving about $1,500 a month to under $400 a month, just incredible instability almost overnight. So the financial assistance that we were able to, to provide with your support helps tie families over and um, they put the money towards whatever they most needed it for. And they shared with us that this was often for rent. They didn't know how they were going to pay, pay rent this week. They were able to pay rent or for food or for, for their children's school supplies or for medicine. Um, so this was crucial in, in helping mitigate what was a devastating um, impact. Uh, on this community. Rental assistance was also key. Um, we've had a partnership with Marin County to provide rental assistance to thousands of families. Um, and we learned last year, again, through a survey that of about 3,000 families, um, they were a total of $32 million in accumulated back rent just numbers that are, are beyond our imagination. Um, and this, I think, goes to show the deep structural inequalities that existed before the pandemic uh, and that this crisis has um, opened up. So let's go to the next slide, please. Our, um, another another mm, illustration of the two worlds that we often see here in Marin is the digital divide and, and, uh, and learning divide. So the, some communities in Marin, often more privileged, often white communities may have single family homes. And we see in the canal community and BIPOC low income communities, multifamily homes. Um, during the pandemic, when families when children were studying from home, um, some families in Marin were able to pay for tutors to come to their home and work with their, work with their children. Other families, like families in the canal, um, had teens studying while they were tutoring their younger siblings. Um, we saw an internet divide where in the canal community, 60% of the community had access to some internet, often unstable, whereas other communities across Marin had 90% access. In the canal, there was 40% access to a computer. Again, in other communities, 90% access. So we responded to this divide to, to mitigate what could have been an ever-widening educational gap um, by helping implement a mesh Wi-Fi network, uh, donating Chromebooks to families and students, as well as Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, as Sarah mentioned, the canal community has a higher percentile of children than other communities in Marin. And to support these children, we partnered with the County Office of Education to launch learning pods um, in the local community center so that students could have the tutoring and educational support that other families in Marin could, could hire. But, um, but all students and all children needed this support. So that was a successful launch. All right, next slide, please. And finally, and very importantly, um, Canal Alliance has launched new public health efforts um, to respond to the ongoing impact of COVID. We have a uh, rapid COVID test site that's open twice a week. You can, if you're a Canal resident or a, a worker in the canal, you can um, get your COVID test results in under 30 minutes for free. Um, and the community members that I mentioned that we work with support us at this site and also support us in doing general outreach around COVID um, and vaccine registration. Uh, the online vaccine registration is an, one more barrier um, to getting a vaccine to um, taking COVID mitigation efforts, safety efforts, and the community members that we work with work alongside us um, to help people sign up for vaccines and um, break down that barrier. Um, and the in-person outreach that we do with community members is the most impactful um, way of, of communicating and of um, getting the word out about 
how to stay safe uh, in this ever-changing reality that we're in. Um, and the bilingual and culturally competent um, leaders who we've helped support in this work, um, we really could not have done this without them, without the partnership of a community group that we work with, a group called Voces del Canal, um, the canal community wouldn't have one of the highest vaccination rates in Marin, and Marin wouldn't have one of the highest vaccination rates um, statewide. Um, so I think we, I, I really just want to take a moment to celebrate and honor and thank co community members from across Marin who have risked, risked a lot um, to connect to their own families and, commun and community members. Um, to keep them safe during COVID. So I'll just wrap up with one last, another story. I'll also share a story of one of these community leaders who has been in this work for decades, um, has worked to have after school programs for kids, soccer in the park, um, educational equity. And when the pandemic began, was more than willing uh, to, to, to learn how to become a community health worker um, and care for her whole community in this way. She's seen decades of challenges in community work and advocacy work and has decades of wisdom and experience and struggle and celebrations and wanted to step up to this challenge as well. I think one of the most beautiful things about her story is um, that like any good leader, she brought people along with her. So this group of Voces del Canal with this woman's leadership and many others um, has grown exponentially. Um, and each, each of them blossoms um, as they engage with their community and care, care for their ongoing safety as Omicron uh, spiked and as we are gonna be seeing more vaccine rollouts here um, in April, um, they continue to be on the front lines of this work. So with that, um, I'll pass it back to you, Sarah. Great, thank you, Rose. Um, so that wraps up our presentation, uh, but I, I would really like to reiterate our thanks, our gratitude to the Outdoor Art Club for inviting us to present. Um, what I didn't mention, Canal Alliance is a nonprofit. Uh, we rely on the engagement, the volunteer support, the financial support of generous people throughout the community to make our programs work. So we do not do this work in isolation. We really are committed to making Marin a place where everyone can live, learn, work, and succeed. And we rely on a lot of partners, individuals, corporations, and organizations like the Outdoor Art Club to make that happen. So I invite you, if you're interested in learning more, please visit our website. Obviously, we're happy to take a donation if you're, if you're interested in making a financial contribution to support our programs. We also have opportunities to volunteer. Um, primarily right now, what we're looking for volunteers to support our education programs for youth and adults. Um, and if you just wanna learn more about the work that we're doing, sign up for our newsletter or follow us on social media. So again, thank you for your invitation and thank you also for uh, your generous donation that you made early in the pandemic that really allowed us to support our efforts to respond to this crisis uh, and support the community in the way uh, that they need to be supported to be able to continue to pursue their goals. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, Ilana and Rose. As an immigrant and first generation, first person to graduate college in my family, I know the importance of Canal Alliance. So thank you. And we will now begin the Q&A and I will read from the uh, bottom of my screen here, the first question. First question is, how was Canal Alliance able to pivot so quickly to virtual services and to launch new emergency and public services during the pandemic. Will these new services continue? Great, great question. Um, we were very fortunate to be in a very strong financial position when the pandemic hit. And we have really for many, many years been committed to um, ensuring that we have a, a good cash reserve so that when emergencies hit, we're prepared to respond. 
So that was one real critical factor. The other one, another critical factor was just the dedication of our team led from our CEO on down. Our team was very committed. We saw even before the initial shelter in place order was issued, we saw the impact that the pandemic was already having on our families and we knew it was gonna be devastating. And our CEO was on the ground, you know, in the community, really leading efforts and organizing the entire team to do what we could to um, make sure that our services continued uh, uninterrupted to the extent possible that we were able to shift to virtual or remote services really quickly and continue uh, you know, serving the community. And we were also committed, we saw <laughs> that we had, um, we had to respond to new needs that were coming in. So as Rose mentioned, our pandemic, our, our public health response, those were all new efforts. We weren't, it's not something that we were doing. We weren't doing any kind of health outreach before the pandemic. Um, but we saw that the community was really lacked access to information, both for technology reasons and for language reasons. And we needed to provide, you know, provide that link between what the government um, and the media was providing information and making sure that we were able to, to provide that information to our community. Just absolute dedication on the part of our staff. We had also invested in technology. So luckily we had a good cloud-based system. Um, so the, all of those were the internal things that we had in place and that we were committed to. But the other thing that really, really helped was that the community stepped up in just an incredible way. Rose mentioned that we distributed over $3.2 million in emergency cash relief to families, to over almost 6,000 families. And that was because community members, individuals, families, foundations, businesses stepped up to support those efforts. And it was really this um, community response. You know, we were at the front line of the response, but it was um, engaging all kinds of community members to, to address the needs and, and to really serve the community. So grateful for all of that. Very good. Thank you for answering that uh, question, Sarah. So um, the next question here is, uh, what kind of donations would be most helpful to Canal Alliance? So obviously cash donations. Um, we have, you know, most of the money that we receive, uh, most of our budget comes from philanthropy from you know individual contributions and those contributions either are for general support you know with no restrictions we can use them however we want and sometimes people make donations to support specific programs so people may be interested in supporting our immigration team or they may be interested in supporting the youth in our after school program so obviously cash donations um, because it makes up such a large portion of our budget and our revenue are really important but other things that we're always looking for um, looking for donations of material items at times that families can use. So we look for school supplies for the students in our after school program. Since we've been working remotely, we've been distributing school supplies to families. We are still, I believe, um, you know, uh, looking for donations of items like hand sanitizer and masks and personal, you know, personal protective equipment and those types of things. So in-kind donations, we actually have a list on our website that lists the types of things that we're looking for. Um, obviously, if anybody's connected with a foundation that's a grant-making foundation that would be interested, we'd be interested in having a conversation with them as well. Uh, those are primarily, am I missing anything? I think those are primarily the, the types of donations that we are looking for. Um, I think there are no other questions. So, um... Thank you, Sarah, Ilana, and Rose for your presentation. Um, would you like to say any uh, closing remarks, Sarah, or Ilana, Rose, um, closing remarks before we, we leave? <laughs> I, I would just end by saying, you know, again, thank you for, thank you for the invitation to present. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to talk about the work and the, the mission of Canal Alliance and the impact that we're having with support of generous people like you. So thank you for this opportunity. And uh, I hope that our, this is just another step in our long-term partnership with the Outdoor Art Club. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for having us. Thank you. So thank you. thank you to all our viewers for joining us this afternoon. We hope you enjoyed our program and learned about the valuable work done at the Canal Alliance. The Outdoor Art Club's next public webinar will be held on March 3rd, 
The speaker will be Ben Needham Wood, award-winning ballet dancer, educator, and choreographer. Ben danced with Smuin Contemporary Ballet for seven years. He will discuss his residency at Smuin, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it's Smuin, um, and mental health in the ballet profession. You can sign up for this and all pub future public webinars by going to the Outdoor Art Club's website and clicking on public events. Thank you, everyone, and we hope to see you again.